And before we get this podcast started, I want to ask you one thing, Wesley. Are you natty or not? Ooh, that is actually a very interesting question. <laughs> well, as I'm a professional bodybuilder, as I have actually said the last couple of times, people have asked me, no professional bodybuilder is natural, including right. myself. Plus, if you say I only use 1500 milligrams total, you know, uh, during prep, then they won't believe it either. You know, they say I, Wesley's on at least three grams and 20 units of growth, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So you, you can't win. You can't, basically, you can't win. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and so again, what, are you, what are you running, Wesley? <laughs> Well, that's, that's actually a, a very good point because I saw you talking with someone about Jay Cutler when he mentioned some amounts yeah. about what he used to do back in the off season, even. Mm -hmm. But even myself, when I listen to that, I'm like, he got to mm -hmm. that incredible size with that amount. That is quite impressive. So yeah. it's natural to even doubt, even as a as a professional bodybuilder myself who has been through the years of preps and doing everything necessary to be in your in your best uh, shape mm. when i hear him talk about it i'm even like wow is that is that a hundred percent truth or was that the minimal dosage needed to maintain what he already had does he use that as the amount that he uses for example so yeah. you never forget about what, what he was doing during prep it's yeah it's very hard to decipher and i think the audience is also a lot smarter nowadays because there's so mm -hmm. many steroid educators and, and people really yeah. go after the information not just go yeah. to the steroid forums or talk to the you know jim bro uh, the biggest guy in the gym mm -hmm. so the audience is smarter which also makes them question everything so yeah. even i get questions about lowering the dose recently because i'm trying not to kill myself right? <laughs> i mean I, yeah i made plenty of mistakes in the past and you know i'm a you just start to get older and you realize that it's it, it's probably not worth it to subject yourself to you know crazy True. doses in yeah so yeah. I, I lowered the dose to 600 milligrams in total right the half mm -hmm. half test half primo give or take and then people don't believe it but they disregard yeah. the 20 years that i you know was bodybuilding 10 years using drugs at a gram two grams total and, and the muscle memory that's involved and I think as you get older, you can also use less because you get smarter with your body. That's true. And, and when you say less, it's probably less steroids, but maybe a couple other compounds on top. Can yeah. you talk about things that you've done and regretted or, or felt were completely unnecessary? Maybe maybe to warn people of what is not required to be a phenomenal Wesley Visitors. So the first mistake, and it's an obvious one at the beginning, the amount needed is way lower than you think. Mm -hmm. I'm coaching quite a lot of naturals who actually come to me to start their first cycle, for example, because mm -hmm. they trust that if they, if under my guidance, they will not be doing anything crazy. And every single one starting at the minimal dose will make kilos of quality yeah. muscle gain, which remains. It doesn't go away. And that's yeah. the big benefit. So the biggest problem and the one mistake that I made because I was under the guidance of someone at the very beginning who mm. was pretty extreme himself. So even mm. his lower doses were medium doses to begin with, which medium to me I, is still a little too high because when I see now with even people genetically not gifted, making quite some progress on the minimal dose, I mean, I'm like, oh, I could have started way lower and maybe wrote out a lower amount of milligrams for a longer period of time. And also the knowledge about testosterone and aromatization to estrogen was lacking. So yeah. I, I actually, and this was uh, well known in 2016 in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. there was a very big ban on gynecomastia in the competitions. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I had it from puberty already naturally. Oh, okay, and but of course, when you start a cycle, it comes back full force if you don't do anything yeah. about the estrogen right. management. And of course, my coach didn't mention it, and I didn't oh, have the knowledge. Yeah. So, so you didn't use an aromatized inhibitor in your first cycle. No, nothing. So just 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 test. I don't tell me. Did you do a D-ball kickstart? No, no, never anything okay. like that. <laughs> I never even used. Okay. I never even used that at all. So, okay. uh, so. But that's. But, but Wesley, Wesley Dianabol, 
is a very vintage compound. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I knew a lot about vintage bodybuilding, but I didn't even know. Uh, I didn't even think about uh, what was Arnold using or um, okay. what what did they use back then to look like that. That honestly, I didn't even know what anabolics were until like mm -hmm. twenty or twenty one, and that's, that's when I realized, oh, better. okay, yeah, because I lived in a in a farmer's town in a gym mm -hmm. where nobody knows anything about bodybuilding and uh, i was the only right. one who had a little bit of muscle so right. uh so it's and people were hard to, me. It, yeah it's very hard to get inspired in a gym like that you know yeah, if you're sure. already the biggest guy early on and nobody has the knowledge that's why i tell most people said hey if you really want to be in the sport or follow your dreams sign up to the gym where the biggest bodybuilders are and if yeah. you have to change cities you know so you move to amsterdam or move to somewhere else but now, now you you said fuck it i'll just make my own gym yeah yeah but i did move to another gym in the me uh, in between so i moved from that town to breda in the netherlands which mm -hmm. is a slightly bigger city with serious bodybuilders competing there and in that gym that's when i met my first coach and don't get me wrong mm -hmm. even though his advices weren't perfect he was a very nice guy he helped me a whole mm -hmm. lot uh, my first show i did naturally to prove to myself mm -hmm. can i win the overall here naturally without anything mm -hmm just to prove am i worthy of going to right. the next step and even even then i thought i if i look back now i could have still waited a couple of years because i was mm -hmm. just beginning to understand what bodybuilding truly is in terms of supplementation nutrition hard training uh to be consistent with that because i made quite a lot of gains with literally only eating 300 grams of quark post-workout and that's <laughs> all that i did for my nutrition uh same here and, dude like for for the guys that speak english quark is uh, cottage cheese so yeah you have a bucket which you can buy at albertine which is the biggest grocery store chain in holland 50 cents back then and yeah. maybe, maybe now it's a euro maybe now it's a euro or two euro i, I can't remember probably inflation well, ruined i actually the used a strawberry flavored one so because i didn't oh, like the, uh, the regular one <laughs> I, I i used the regular one 50 grams of casein yeah. protein and, and and 10 grams of carbs or something like that in total and then you throw in um xxl nutrition whey protein that was the only oh yeah way in uh, producer in holland that was available and all the imported stuff was so expensive yeah so you get a bucket of quark and a scoop of whey protein, vanilla flavored, and you add some oats, and that will be nutrition. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, of the course, rest a lot of the day of didn't matter. <laughs> no, the rest of the day didn't matter, right? <laughs> so, so, right, you, you, you also think that you've gotten right a, a couple more kilos on your natural potential simply because yeah. the, you know, the, the knowledge wasn't there. I, 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 I'm coaching one person. He's called mm -hmm. uh, Tom. Tom. And he has a lot of, uh, he will be known in the industry for sure. Okay. I'm not just saying this. He will be, he's as tall as me. He mm -hmm. weighed, he weighed like 105 kilos with good condition mm -hmm. naturally with a tiny uh -huh. waist, also uh -huh. classic physique. And he's unknown under the radar now. Maybe I don't think he even likes to be very known at the moment, but mm -hmm. he will be known. But the why, why I'm saying this, he he was natural for a very long time. And even until like until he reached my age, still natural. And I, you can mm -hmm. see how big he got naturally, how much progress he made in the off season, just because he waited and waited and waited until he really maximized his potential. Right. And that's when you can say, okay, if you want to go pro, now is the time to step it up and uh, because you also want to contest naturally multiple contests naturally so you, it's possible if you know that you have decent genetics just don't give into it too quickly just don't no i i agree i agree because like a lot of guys they jump jump the gun way too early yeah and, and i could have waited another 10 year or two years but i was already drug free for 10 11 years right so yeah, i was bodybuilding exactly. a long time i certainly didn't have the genetics to might be 100 kilos on stage dry <laughs> i'll be happy with 74 kilos dry yeah. um so i just waited I, I you know i wanted to make a career as a business guy you know consultancy and business and then that fell through and i decided to do my my first cycle because i had all this time available when uh, when the economic crisis of 2009 you know 2010 mm. so this is a long time ago so 
when I did my first cycle, I, I started off low, one ampule of test per week, right? And I make good pro progress, but not phenomenal progress. Yeah. And you, you, your cycle was was that more than an ampule of test per week? Your first the cycle. The very first, the very first was that, but mm -hmm. because the guidance around me wasn't guiding me in a way to be patient for the results. Mm -hmm. I was actually pushed to do a little more than that quite quickly yeah. after a, a, a couple of weeks even, which oh, is right, nothing. Yeah. You have to wait mm -hmm. a, a, like two months to see, okay, if is this dose high enough for me to see mm -hmm. any progress above my natural progress? Mm -hmm. And uh, and with that, another mistake is actually doing a blood test before starting using anything because mm -hmm. I've never – I was never advised to do so. Back then it uh, was so you not didn't do, you do You didn't do a baseline test? No, and that, that's okay. that's a big regret because yeah. it took me years to even realize that, oh, blood tests are actually pretty important to realize your baseline <laughs> levels. Right. And maybe my testosterone was already pretty high. And maybe that would have convinced me, oh, it's actually quite high. I can write this out mm -hmm. for a bit longer. And uh, and to also know when you go off and go PCT, for example, to know where, where you should go back to or where you should strive to go back to after finding out your baseline levels. But because I never did, um, mm. I never, I, ne I will never know the natural testosterone levels. And I think they could have been quite high if I look at my physique back then and see the, the, see so, the, yeah. Yeah, see the progress I made completely naturally. Um, I'm not sure. Do you know the Dutch bodybuilding forum back in the day? It, it was like, um. It was like the the regular forum dot bodybuilding dot nl instead of dot com. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the um, one that was sponsored I, by one of the underground labs. Yeah, <laughs> right. And uh, and I think and that, that was, yeah, you could actually well, we're not post your... the lab, but no. <laughs> I, think one, I think there were I think there was one bodybuilding forum that was actually owned by one of the underground labs, and yeah. they would have reviews, and all of the reviews of this brand were good, and all the other brands yeah. were kind of trash. So yeah. there was also party Fokken. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, where all the party pics were. It, uh, guys, please don't dive into the 2008 time period <laughs> I <know>. <laughs> <laughs> when I used to party. Um, so they, they would do party pics, and then they had a bodybuilding forum there as well. And that that's one of the earliest forums I think that I visited. Of course, I went to Intense Muscle and Muscle Mayhem, which is now closed. That's Chad Nichols' old form, where all the pros would hang out. Mm. But most, right, that was kind of the information where we started to get, you know, our cycle yeah. design. And and now looking back, I think a lot of the information there was wrong or could have been done better. But it's, you know, 10, 15 years later. And now we know sure. a lot more about steroids than we did back then. So your, your cycle was ramped up quite heavily. How was your response on your first cycle? Did you, like, blow up, blow up compared to everybody else? So I gained 14 kilos during contest prep for, uh, <laughs> for, for that show. <laughs> and it, so and this it, is and how it, you know if you have good genetics, guys. Yeah. So that's kilos. when I realized, okay, it's, it's always a, a double-edged sword thinking about this because in mm -hmm. one hand, I'm like, oh, I wish I, I, I didn't use much at all. I don't even remember the exact dosages, but it wasn't much because mm -hmm. it, I know the, you know, it just wasn't, the volume wasn't that much. But it yeah, wasn't the ejection, the the ejection volume. You mean the yeah, ejection yeah, exactly. volume? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just could but have been was... designed better, probably. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. exactly. But the effect that it had is undeniable for the first show, and then I won again as a junior. My uh, the overall, I won everything you could win in that show, and that did propel me into the Dutch bodybuilding scene as one of the guys to watch, because I went from. Uh, a D athlete to an A athlete, which is what, the, one season. Yeah, in in one week, <laughs> in one week. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Dude, really? Yeah, you went from but a D athlete to an A athlete. In a I know guys that that struggled from B to A for ten years. I know, yeah, ten years, and, and they gave everything for bodybuilding. Yeah, they and, gave and, everything. Yeah. So that's that's kind of when I knew, okay, uh, I might have a future here because I was still mm -hmm. a junior. And that, and two, that, yeah, in that was uh, in that year. So I won uh, the C contest and I did a B contest. I won and that qualified me for the A contest on the same right. day, which is a, the Juliet Bergman Classic Grand Prix yeah. in the yeah. Netherlands. And, the, and um, I won that 
won as well. So which, I which was already was at the top in 2014. So I was. Yeah, okay, um, no, no, I didn't watch. I watched the one in like 2007 or eight. Ah. That's how long ago. Yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've been a lot on the amateur circuit for in the beginning, and then of course I moved here, so I, I haven't yeah. watched that show. Would have been fun if we were both there at the same show. Yeah, that would that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah. But of course, I uh, I was still uh, quite still at that height. I was 98 kilos on stage, and uh, even though quite heavy, not developed enough to really compete with a super heavyweight, which is above 100 kilos. So that's when I took a couple of years to really uh, um, make some progress, put on some quality and weight, and within that year, in within those years, that's when I started the YouTube channel actually, and did my uh, next show. And that's when I started to do the Arnold Classic Europe and uh, the and the other bigger shows to make a name for myself within uh, the industry. And uh, yeah, that was it was an amazing time looking back. But I do believe that with the knowledge I have now, and maybe in ten years I'll say something entirely different because then I have yeah. more knowledge. But keep, keep with the knowledge on. right now, I would have started way lower. Would have done a blood test first, started later. Uh, but at the same time, as I just mentioned. If I didn't do all that, would I be where I am right now? Probably not. No, probably not. Like we all learn from our mistakes, and it's it's yeah. never too late to learn. But like I, I, I tell myself, I could have started two years later, but I, I might have stayed natural, or or might mm -hmm. have never gotten to the point I am now. Yeah. Which you know, it it is a bit weird to say, but I am here because of taking the steroids. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because now I have all this knowledge, and I exactly. you develop your physique to the point that it. That it is impressive. So you gained 14 kilos on your first cycle during prep. Yeah. I want everybody yeah. to listen to this because this th this shows that you can go far. And if this doesn't happen, I gained four kilos. That's it close to my natural potential where I assume I could have gained another two. So that's maybe mm -hmm. two kilos I could have gained and then yeah. two kilos because of the steroids, right? So four kilos. Because I did my first cycle, 250 milligrams test in a day per week. After five weeks, I was 92 kilos from 88 to 92, 93. And then I started recomping. So I figured, you know what, let's turn this off season into a prep because I'm eating 5,000 calories and I'm getting leaner. You know, it's a perfect time to start dieting. Yeah, so I, I dropped yeah. it to 4,500, got leaner, and then I still ended up at like 2,500 at the end mm -hmm. with two hours of cardio because I was used to wow. doing two hours of cardio. Yeah. And I was 78 kilos instead of 74 at similar, mm -hmm. a little bit leaner. So yeah. I gained about four kilos on the scale, a little bit better, but you gained 14 in a real prep. That, that's yeah. freaking insane. And I, I see it happen around me, guys that have this phenomenal response, even to a poor cycle, right? That's like designed less than favorably. But I think that people should realize that, listen, if you want to make it big in the sport and don't jeopardize your health later on, when you get to the competitive level, in the beginning, you should make phenomenal progress. Even if you're doing the diet and the training and the, mm -hmm. and the cycle wrong, you should still blow the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, the people like holy shit, what's going on? Like, what happened to you? And then later on, you you get more knowledgeable and and you know a little bit more conscious about what you're doing. Yeah. So nowadays, like we've learned a lot, right? So again, when you look back, that first cycle is probably not unnecessary. Any any compounds that you regret taking, or did you figure it were not useful to get to the point you are now? <laughs> 